In today's video, we're gonna be putting some hand guards on our CRF300L. The ultimate hand guard compilation. We're gonna have turn signals and mirrors and hand guards and running lights. If you've been following this series, you may be saying, Jake, didn't you just put some hand guards on this bike? And I did, those were the T-Rex racing hand guard. They're designed to work very well with the full stock system and they are just normal sort of clamp onto the bar system. They had given them to me, so we went in and threw them on just so we could show that it was a good option for someone who just wants a very simple clamp on to the bar style hand guard. Now, when we did have a slight crash with the bike, not a big one, and it did twist the hand guard. That's what typically does happen with those clamp on style guards. And it actually twisted to the point that what stopped it was the master cylinder, the front brake. Uh, that could have easily been pretty bad. So we knew we were gonna upgrade them anyway, but I was always telling people, nah, the other you know, T-Rex ones are a good solution for some people. I don't know now, you know, I like their other stuff on the bike, it's been great. So let's take a look at what we're putting on today. The hand guards themselves are gonna be the Zeta XC kit. Revzilla sent this out to me. You can get this kit on their website. It comes in a bunch of different colors. We went with the all sort of black on black here. Uh, if I could go back and change anything, I would have done the blue or red or something just to match the crazy colors of the bike. Revzilla also sent me out Zeta's insertable little turn signals. These actually fit into the hand guards. We're gonna get rid of the big goofy turn signals. I think it's a smart design because it brings them in enough where I know you're gonna get damaged anyway. Also from Zeta, and again sent to us by Revzilla, triple clamp hand guard mounts. These are just some really cool mounts. They're gonna switch it from being a normal clamp on, which does come in the kit, to being secured on the triple. And this will keep them from being able to twist. You always had hand guards know that it doesn't take much of a fall to, twi to cause them to twist. Having them much more rigid could be a really good thing. Also, I got these from Custom LEDs. These are called Blinker Genie right here. Uh, not a sponsor, just a product I bought myself. Our lights only have on and off. This is gonna make them so that they stay on constantly. When the turn zone goes on, they're gonna go into a flashing off sort of state. Pretty cool, only like 20 something bucks for these things. To finish it all up, the Power Mad hand guard mirrors. These are just some cheap little mirrors that are designed to bolt onto hand guards. I bought them for my FZ over here. They're small, they sit on the end of the hand guards, they can be folded in when you don't wanna use them. And the funniest thing is these are some of the best <laughs> mirrors I've ever had on a motorcycle. I had my expectations so low because they're very cheap, I thought, Hopefully they'll work okay. They're great, they're so wide, they get around your arms, you can see everything really, really well out of them. If you do break one, they're really cheap. So that's what we got. I'm even planning to pull the entire bracket off that the whole dash headlight thing is kind of up against. I can't stand these weird, they, they look like Frankenstein's bolts coming out of his neck, the things that the factory turn signals are bolted onto. And I think they're gonna look really goofy when I remove those turn signals and have up high ones, you know, these just dumb pieces of metal sticking out. So I plan to like cut all that off and remove it. So I guess the first thing to do is pull the headlight off because we need to get to that bracket and we need to get to the turn signal connectors. So let's go ahead and get onto the actual hand guards then. We can deal with the wiring and the bracket and everything later. I want to get this mounted all up first so you can kind of see how everything is going to lay out. I right, our kit here. We have some hardware it comes with. Normally, these are the clamps that would go around the bars. They're kind of all adjustable. These would sort of clamp onto the bars and hold the inside part of it. This is what's going to make the whole thing able to twist. Since we've got the upgraded clamps that go on the triples, we don't need these. But don't throw these away. These things are pretty handy. These are really well built. You could always put this somewhere else on your bar and mount a Ram mount or GoPro or whatever, right? So I always hang on to these things. If you have like the stock setup or closed in grips with the throttle tube, go watch the last video where we changed the bars out on this bike. Even if you're not changing the bars, you can see sort of our method for the bar sticking through the grips and uh, out of the way, because you will need that. We're gonna run into some problems. Our upper triple clamp here, you see we have two bolts that go in right here. These things are directional and this will be the one I'm looking for. If we use the bolts that came off the bike, they're gonna be a bit short, aren't they? Zeta knows that, so they give you some longer ones. Now you wanna check these and make sure that these are gonna work right for your bike. Uh, let's make sure the threads are the same, which they are. And if you look, the threaded area is actually the same length. That's really good. We just have a longer, what's called shank area, which is perfect. These are really well set up. These are also, yeah, 10 millimeter as well. This is really good hardware it came with. There's gonna be some adjustability in this, so we don't wanna tighten it down necessarily just yet. We are gonna run into a little bit of an issue on this side, which is one of our brake cable guides is directly in front of these bolts. In fact, we couldn't even pull these out with this sitting here. So it's possible I could just put it as a longer bolt in the spacer and space this whole guide out. For right now, I'm going to leave it off and once we get more things installed, I'll come back to this. We definitely want to run this. We just need to see how things are going to be set up. Now we can start looking to size up our handguard on this side. They are 
directional. They have this little curve in them so that it kind of covers the brake a little bit better. See how it kind of comes out, or in this case, the clutch. We have two different points that we can bolt our end of our handguard to, and the end of our handguard has a slotted hole. So we should be able to sort of manipulate, find a hole that works and that will clamp down with a normal bolt. The other side though, how do we clamp onto that, right? It's a hollow tube bar thing. This is gonna be inside the bar and on the other side of this bolt is this little wedge. And as we tighten this up, it's gonna spread the fingers on this guy and grip inside the bar. If we stick this in here, we could turn this screw pretty much all day and never actually tighten this thing up. No, no, what we have to do Sort of tricky is we gotta tighten this thing up enough so that when we put it in, it's got a little bit of friction on it. Check it a couple times so you get it where, yeah, just like that, there's a little bit of friction. These things are a little goofy, but that's how you need to start that. Bolt in a washer. We're gonna assume that this bracket is adjusting itself right now as we tighten these other two up, and it will have. We have, remember, the throttle tube right here. We need to make sure the bar sticks out further than it. So when this guy is pressed up tight against there, it has no chance of dragging against this. If it does look like it's dragging, some people go, oh, I'll just pull it out a little bit when you tighten up. That's no good, because in a good fall, it's gonna press it in. And sometimes you fall and you're on the throttle. That's, hear people fall and their throttle's just pinned. It's usually something silly like that. When we go to put this on there, look. We are having a little bit of an interference with the throttle cables. Now here's the thing. Since the last video, when I raised the bars up a little bit, this angle's a little funny in the first place. I've been kind of looking into this, okay? And honestly, a lot of it has to do with this guide right here. I'm gonna show you something. If we angle these down slightly more with that out and with our hand guard in place, this should actually work out just fine to not have that bracket there. And that bracket of all things too is attached to the piece that holds the turn signals anyway that I want to remove. So this this cable guide, they are there for a good reason. I've kind of sit here and played with those, swung the bars back and forth. I feel pretty confident in saying, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to end up removing this. You really want to tighten these two first before this one, because see at this point, I could loosen this up and like drop the forks. This thing's not going to be at some weird angle or anything like that. So, no interference there. Everything's working as it should. Oh yeah, they look happy like that. Let's take our focus back onto the electronics. I'm going to follow these turn signal wires. I think they both go into this pouch right here. You got that. These things kind of, pull, yeah, there it is. It sort of pulls out. Now, I used to take these things apart all the time. It was a Honda Tech. It was like an everyday thing. I don't remember how this goes anymore. This, this is, seems like silly engineered. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was the purpose of doing it this way? So, you know, how about that? If I want to remove the main bracket in here to cut these things off, I got to start pulling all these little cables off. There's a number of these little clips, and I guess best I'm seeing is you just kind of squeeze them and pull them out. And then we just got four screws that hold the dash in. I've got everything disconnected. I think it's just two big 12 millimeters under here. Man, this thing's on there. There we go. If I wanted to keep that throttle cable bracket, what I'd have to do is try to come up with some way of semi-chopping this. You know, I still would want to cut part of this off, but I'd probably maybe pick an angle from like there down. But since I don't care about that, I'm just going to try to cut it off fairly flush here with the side. I'll use a Dremel and kind of clean it up as best I can. This was some kind of tab for the ABS, so was this one. I don't have to get rid of them, but let's do it. Simplified. I've stuck the bracket back on temporarily because we need to figure out what we're gonna do with our brake guide. Before our brake guide went kind of up here, it's gonna be way too close to these two bolts right here. Like I said, we could try to space it off a little bit and I'm sure we can make something work. So I started thinking instead, what if we did something like this? Mounted it against our new flat surface right here. And we could even use this ledge to kind of bump up a little bit into so it a little less prone to twisting. I got a little spacer in here. Look, we can kind of set this all up, put a nut on the back side, bolt it down. That. Cool. I went back over the part with the uh, the Dremel again, using the, the little wire wheel, really just cleaned up all the edges, got them where they're kind of smooth, then cleaned this thing up with alcohol, a whole bunch. All that's left now is to get it repainted. It is a piece of steel. We don't want to leave it exposed. Perfect world, I'd run over to we coat it, 
and let them recode it. But when I say run over there, they're in Houston, I'm in the Dallas area, so it's not exactly doable. So instead, uh, we just go to my paint booth. Don't have a paint booth? Neither do I. Let me show you what I do. If you have a box like this, paint it. We're just going to kind of use this as a shield as we go around to catch the overspray. Hey, I've done many of spray paint jobs like this and they've all worked out pretty good. Big thing is when you're doing some spray paint, don't lay down big heavy amounts of it. Do really light coats and just do a lot of them and it'll end up looking really good. Do about like six or nine of those, give it a few minutes between coats. While the paint is drying, let's start messing with our turn signals. You got three wires coming out of these turn signals, right? Three on each of these. Our turn signals only have two wires. These were set up to have a running light and a blinking light. So if we just wanted to wire these up like normal, we just gotta figure out which of the two wires we need. One that's the running, we would just kick that out. I wanna keep the functionality of having running lights and blinkers, and that's what these guys do. This is gonna connect to our three wires. Wiring diagrams right here, it's not too complicated. I made this about as simple as you can get. This is gonna make it so the light stays on. When we're not using our turn signal, it just be solidly on. We go to use the turn signal, instead of flashing on, it'll flash off. But it'll have the same effect as a blinking light. So it's on 12 volts, uh, DC, three little wires exposed. We wanna make sure they're not touching anything, and let's turn the key on. Now we don't have a dash or anything right now, or headlight or many things. We don't have many things right now. But I'm going to start checking across. I'm going to bet that the solid is going to be the running light. But the striped one is. Okay, now watch this. Turn signal on. We should see kind of some jumping voltage now. You see how it's all over the place? It's really going up to 12 every time, but these kind of meters aren't good for that. If we go back to the other one, it should still be 12 volts on the other one, right? Oh no, does it take it away? So turn the key off so we don't short anything out. And now we know what's what. Solid is our blinker. White stripe is our running. Solid green is negative. So I've transferred that over onto my paper here with my chicken scratch. It's the same thing, but all the blues are oranges on the other one. Very simple. So with that, we know how to wire this thing up. It's not my favorite thing to do, but I've kind of temporarily twist wired it everything together. I gotta make sure nothing touches. I just wanna give a quick check and see if this works. All right, well, first of all, that's pretty good. It came on. Uh-oh. The turn signals have something called a relay, right? If they're set up to work with incandescent, halogen, whatever bulbs, and you switch to LEDs, they don't tend to work properly. And that's fine because I happen to have, from Speed Metal, an LED turn signal relay. This is uh, Revzilla sent this out to me. My discount code does work with this brand. Let's pop this in real quick, super simple, and see if this fixes it. Stock relay right here. LED relay. Obviously, this is not going to fit into this same little rubbery slot. That's all right. We got room for it right here. This is a little pouch. So don't go bouncing all around. I'm going to put a little bit of dual lock on here. Never used dual lock before. This stuff is just like, it's like the best Velcro, if you can even call it Velcro. Other piece, listen, it'll snap. There we go. So we put that relay on and Things kind of worked, but um, not really. It's all right, I know how to fix it. It just means things have gotten a little bit more complicated, but don't worry if you've fallen along to this point, you can handle this, it's not a big deal. First of all, the relay itself, once we did clip it in, didn't really work until I unplugged the rear lights, which tells me if you're gonna go with the LED relay, it's like an all-in or don't kind of thing. There are fixed rate relays out there, and I imagine maybe one of those could get away with doing a combination of LEDs and uh, halogens that come on there. But for myself, I've just unplugged them for now, and, and what all it means is that now, the very next thing I have to do is do the whole fender eliminator on the rear. And please don't kill me. I, I, I really wanna throw the supermoto wheels on and go do all supermoto things, but we do have to like, do the whole fender luminary. So let's actually look though at what's happening. I'm gonna give you all a little better explanation of what the blinker genie does, the issue that we're running into, and how we're gonna fix it. This is the, the connector coming off the motorcycle, right? And we've got three wires in here. Let's say that the, the black is the negative, the red is your flasher light, and the green is the constant on light. The problem is our bulb is a two-wire bulb. It can only turn on and off. It doesn't have like a bright and brighter setting in it. This is where our blinker genie with a question mark is, what does it do? It's amazing. It takes all three wires and gives you a single positive, and then we need to branch the negative around. And this is what makes it do the cool flashy thing that it can do. The problem is that when we have our running light on, find the black, and the green are running power to this thing. When we switch to the blinking mode, Honda 
cuts the power to the running light. That's kind of unusual. Uh, most manufacturers don't do that. This needs to be fed continual power. What can we do? Well, sitting right next to this in our housing is a connector that has positive and negative not doing anything. This is our accessory plug. If you watched the video where we installed the GPS on the bike just recently, we tapped into this plug. We have it just sitting here. In fact, I have basically a plug going into it that goes down to some wires to a cap that I can pop off and put whatever accessory on I want to run. So what we can do is we can tap into the positive off of this. These connectors, I think I said last time, I found them online for like nine bucks pre-wired. So if you get this, I mean, the good thing is you will have a connector you can hook other accessories to. Go watch the GPS video. And there's even a timestamps in there. You can skip to the part where I'm just doing this plug. It's very, it's very simple. We take this and we're gonna do we're gonna split off of it and put two connectors coming off of it, off the positive, and we'll have another connector on the other side all the way up into this. In fact, we won't even connect it on that one. This connector will easily handle that little bit of extra draw from the LED lights, the switched item thing, so as soon as the key's on, this is feeding power. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull off my accessory wire that I added to the bike. Here's that connector right there. You see it does live in the same housing that the turn signal wire is hooked onto. The wire I need to tap into is this guy right here. Now let's focus on our little wires that are gonna come off of there. I've snipped me off two little pieces. These are those little connectors that kinda snip together. Normally you're just supposed to crimp these things down, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it a little bit better. Modify this a little bit. Now I've kinda melted it in there a little bit. Put a piece of heat shrink on it. Now we just need to build another one of these. Now we just need to attach these guys onto here. Attach a metal end on a red wire. A little mill end right here. We need to try to put some heat shrink along here and I need to get another piece of wire here. I'm gonna do it black because that's what our ground's gonna be here anyway. We're gonna run this along there because remember we need to tie in on the negative over here going into our blinker genie but also run another one coming across for our turn signal. The blue with a white stripe that's our running light which obviously we're not gonna be using that anymore so we can just snip that back and put some heat shrink over this and it'll just kind of protect it. According to my chart that we made, the green wire coming off of here needs to go to the black wire, both black wires in fact. But now we just need to put our blue and our white together. And through the power of heat shrink, we've got this. Plug into our normal turn signal stock, plug our little extra cable in, and this guy should go to the turn signal and work. Do a little quick twisty up job and see if it does right. We're gonna first turn the key on, and there we go, we get our little yellow light. Now let's go for a turn signal. Hey, look at that. It was a pretty bright little guy. Looked right at it, that was stupid, okay. Awesome, so that works. So before I solder in this other side, I actually want to put the bracket and everything kind of back up on here so we can kind of see how everything's gonna be routed up and sitting on there. Woo, look at this bracket, okay. <laughs> nice and smooth, putting those layers on slowly but surely. If you ever see my bike now in public and you go, wow, his bracket's so glossy, you'll know why. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up our new our brake cable guide. I'm gonna put a little Loctite on this bolt. I've got a bunch of these just random spacers sitting around. You know, go down to store, especially like I know I got Ace around me. They've got all kinds of stuff like that. It looks correct. Yeah, kind of bumping up into the corner there. I clip back in all these cable things. They're most of them are really obvious where they go. If you got one that's not obvious, we'll just, just keep plugging in other stuff and it'll probably reveal itself to you. There. The screws that hold this dash on are like a little sheet metal screw going into plastic. So to avoid cutting new grooves with each time we screw it in, we want to screw it backwards. Keep pushing up on it while you screw backwards. You'll get a point where it falls into its previous threads. I'm going to uh, secure this turn signal now to the shield. And then on this side, all right, it's like that. Now we can kind of see how we want to route this wire. There. I'll cut it right there. That way I'll have enough room and I'll solder those two wires together. Y'all see me solder it up, right? I just went and did it real quick. So there it is, everything's now connected and I'm gonna solid light on and there's your turn signal. Now, I just gotta do the whole thing again. And now we've got two. I'm gonna throw just a pinch of Loctite on them. It either works or right, burn the house down. Hazards. <laughs> so it can always be tricky trying to figure out where to put all the wires. I found it was good to secure uh, some of the wiring up here in the top. Reason being is that uh, there's a little more room in the shroud, headlight shroud up here, 
the headlight itself just kind of mashes all into this area. So very little room here. On this bracket, when it's stock, there's actually a little post that sticks out right here. It's such a pain to get it on and off. So I cut that off and I then took that little post and shoved it into the bushing on the headlight. And uh, now I can just slip the whole headlight up and on. Pulling it off is not the hard part, it's putting it back on, it'll make you mental. So everything's looking good, except for this right here. The insulation that came up on these wires. Well, you have this sort of exposed bit, and you can actually see the electrics down in there. I put some silicon around that, and that's dry. And it still didn't give me quite the desired effect I want. I want this more closed off and sealed. That's you know, something I wish Zayd had maybe done a little better job with. I'm gonna put some of this stuff on here called Sugru. Some of y'all seen me use this in the past. This stuff is awesome. It becomes almost like a hardened rubberized plastic and it'll bond to just about everything, but it really, it really likes to bond to like other plastics. So you wear some gloves when dealing with this stuff. It needs about a day to fully set up. It's like a moldable kind of material. If you work it a little bit, I've noticed it gets a little softer. Pretty sure it's like non-conductive. I don't know if they actually advertise it that way, but I, I've put this directly around wires before and not had a problem. And this stuff is very strong though. Once it's dried, I've power washed this material. For 24 hours, it'll bond to all this, harden up like a very hard piece of plastic, it'll seal it, it'll secure a wire. All will be good in the world. And we're down to our mirrors from Power Mads. They're basically universal. Technically, this should be the one that goes over here. But if you take the one from the other side and you flip it up like this, it also works pretty good in that way too. They give you hardware, little springs and uh, bolts with other fasteners. and. You could have some system where you drill a hole in here, put it on, so basically it's locked in a position and you could still roll it. Like there'd be enough spring tension to let this sort of push open and, and turn. I'm looking at this, there's a bolt right here for the hand guards. Uh, they give me hardware where I could put an extended one in there. I don't even need to make it where it needs to fold because it's basically out of the way. It's inside the hand guard. I think this will work still pretty good. Like I said, obviously further out's always better. This is a dual sport supermoto bike. You know, I'm not always gonna have time to fold these in. So if these things can sit in some kind of position where they're safe, uh, why not? Almost like somebody Loctited this in. Oh, look at that. It's got some little bunny ears on it. I love that. Not just one mirror, but two mirrors. Do you know there's not just one version of this video, but two? That's right, you go over onto Patreon, you can see a version of this video that came out some days before. It's longer, ad-free, uncensored. If you do that, be sure to link your Discord so you can go chat with me in the Discord chat. God, I was in there like three in the morning the other night. Why'd you guys keep me up so late? Let's see what this looks like though in the dark. Mirrors, turn signals, looking better without those dumb bolts hanging out the side. We've got to do the tail now since the rear tail lights aren't really working properly. That whole fender on the back is so dorky and integrated in, we're gonna dump all that whole thing off and made a way, way better setup on there with some LEDs. Then we'll do the Supermoto video, I swear to God. Just anything else on this build you're curious about how we did it, go check out the build series. There's a whole list of every mod that's been done to this thing has been documented. Uh, yeah, go check that out and I'll see y'all in the next video.